time now for Backpages tonight right here on Sky Sports News. I'm bringing you a first look at the sports stories in the morning's newspapers. And joining us tonight are the sports writer and broadcaster Henry Winter and Martin Ziegler, chief sports reporter for The Times. Very good evening to you both. We'll hear from you shortly. Let's quickly run you through the back pages as they stand so far this Monday evening. The Guardian has Gareth Southgate saying that he knows England can do better. And at the top, Jonathan Yu references uh, Bukayo Saka's selflessness playing left back. Let's uh, show you the back page of the star. In fact, this is the front page. The star making Jude Bellingham's investigation by UEFA over a gesture. Front page news with a rather colourful description of the issue at hand. Uh, England's saviour against Slovakia all over the sun back page as uh, Harry Kane says that getting out of jail will only inspire them. Bellingham also in sharp focus in the Telegraph, saying that he's sacrificing his youthful instincts to keep the number 10 role. Plenty of England analysis there. And the same paper covers Andy Murray's efforts to make it into what will probably be his last Wimbledon. It's going to be a late call from him as to whether he'll play the singles at the All England Club. Welcome along to all you at home. Welcome to Henry and to Martin. Um, still lots of England fallout to discuss. And of course, Jude Bellingham once again making the headlines, but for very different reasons uh, in the morning's newspapers, Henry, and this alleged uh, lewd gesture. Um, and in the Telegraph, uh, you, you can see uh, the headline there. Bellingham uh, reigning in youthful ambition to keep number 10 role. But really what we're focusing on here is the story about him and this goal celebration that, that didn't get captured by the cameras. Here it is in the Daily Star, England hero Jude facing ban after fun sponge footy chiefs launch probe into cheeky hand gesture. Um, what do you think the most likely outcome of this is, Henry? We've seen this sort of thing before with a, a few other protagonists, but it's never resulted in a ban as far as I can remember. Well, we saw it with Emmy Martinez after the World Cup final, and, and that was far worse, and nothing became of that. I imagine they'll just sort of tick him off, warn him of his, his behaviour. He's already addressed it, as, as players can do very quickly on, on social media, saying that it was just a, uh, an inside joke with his friends. He's apparently done it before at uh, Real Madrid. He was quick to point out that he was showing no disrespect to the Slovakian bench, and, and why would he? The Slovakians were absolutely fantastic against uh, England. And I think that if UEFA have got any sense, they'll look at sort of, they'll put this into perspective and say, is this really, what, what's the phrase they use, a potential violation of the basic rules of human conduct? Well, I think if we're going to apply some of those principles, the one or two people who've been trying with accessibility issues have been trying to get into stadiums uh, in wheelchairs and have had problems, maybe UEFA should, should look at that. You know, other things, you know, we've had pitch invaders, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo, um, had people sort of coming at him from all angles in one game, so maybe they should tighten up on the stewarding rather than the youthful exuberance of a player who actually gave this tournament one of its most iconic moments with one of its greatest goals in European Championship history. Let's um, get your thoughts on this, Martin. Um, I mean, admittedly, this is another little sidetrack to what was an extraordinary moment from, from Jude Bellingham. He is, he is very much sort of front and centre in, in, in everyone's thoughts right now in this story. I, I mean, do you think it, it, it is something that is worthy of an UA for investigation or, or is it something to just, just pass and let's get on with the football? Well, I think it's something that will probably lead to a fine. I think anyone's right in that. I think, I mean, although I think within the, the range of sanctions, the ban is there. I think it's very unlikely that will happen. I think we've seen Cristiano Ronaldo... Um, he, he had a fine about five years ago for a similar thing. So I'm sure it will just be that. I mean, I do think a bit, you know, is it why go? To, why even tempt people, the authorities, to, to go down that track? I mean, you know, it, it's not necessary. I think it's distracting actually for the for the team. So I think you know, Bellingham is young. He is still learning in, in lots of ways, even though he's a brilliant footballer. And um, hopefully, this will be a lesson for him um, for the future. Um Henry, I'm just wondering, how do you feel that Jude Bellingham is, is handling everything that is being thrown at him right now in terms of his comments about, you know, giving back a bit, presumably towards the crit critics of media or, 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 or fans? Um, and, and this also added to that. I mean, he's 21 years of age. What's your read on, you know, his own actions in this scenario in, in every single sense? 
in 35 years of covering England, I would put him in the top three players who at an early age you actually thought and you were back to go on and become one of the greats of the game. And I don't say that lightly. I don't get carried away with, with players. You look at everything that Bellingham's got, his physical attributes, his mental attributes, his tactics, the people around him, the way he's driving his career. And actually what we've seen in the last 24 hours is one of the reasons why he is going to continue this upward trajectory right up into the, uh, in, into the peaks of the profession because that goal that he scored when Southgate was considering taking him off after 75 minutes because he looked exhausted to score a goal like that to, you know the physical demands of actually you know executing a bicycle kick you know in the first minute of the first game of the season can be draining to actually do it at the end of the season in the 95th minute of a game when you're exhausted yourself which just shows his determination his heart and his technique and then turning around and going who else i thought that was absolutely brilliant and that shows his elite mindset and you know you only got to look at watch the last dance the uh, the michael jordan uh, there are echoes of that in there. I'm not comparing them because um, Bellingham's still got a long, long way to go, but he's definitely on that pathway. And I do find it rather amusing, all this criticism of, of him. Actually, it's one of the reasons why he is the best player uh, in Spain, why he is England's most important player, why he will go on and become one of the greats of the game, because he has this far within. And if he comes into a press conference and he starts, you know, maybe sort of not necessarily ticking off journalists, but saying, well, I'm having rubbish thrown at me. Look, as critics, we dish it out. We absolutely have to give it back. I'm not that precious that I'm going to sort of throw my toys out the pram if a player has a go back. I think he's absolutely brilliant. And it's one of the reasons why we're blessed in European football, in English football, to have Jude Bellingham because he has got this winner's mindset. He is so driven. And we've seen that in the last 24 hours. And, you know, we could be having this conversation tonight with Gareth Southgate heading down the job centre and England stumbling their way back through Luton Airport. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, it's never glamorous when it's Luton, is it? Let's be honest. Um, let's talk about this piece in The Telegraph from Sam Wallace um, and, and Martin talking about Bellingham's positioning and his, his role as a, as a 10. Is he almost sort of reinventing the role as a 10? He seems like he's, he's got this real obsession, you know, to, to be the new 10 and to, to, to show what, what he can bring to this particular tactical position on the pitch. What do you feel about, the, you know, his read of the game and where he's playing? Well, it hasn't quite clicked, has it, for, for England in the way it has done, certainly in the first half of the season that he hit for Real Madrid, where he was pretty much unstoppable. I think he, he, maybe whether he got a, other teams worked him out a little bit and made it a bit more difficult for him for the second half of the season at Real Madrid, but he, he wasn't quite at the level as when he started. And for England, it hasn't really, I, I would say, it hasn't really clicked at all. He has scored two excellent goals, um, the header and then obviously the overhead kick. But I think a lot of people would feel his impact on the game hasn't been nearly as much as they were expecting. And I'm sure that he himself will think there's a lot more he can do and perhaps try and... Maybe that maybe it's the whole way England are playing just it doesn't help him get that role as he wants it to be. Um, Henry, maybe if I can come to you on one of the other pieces in the in the Telegraph, uh, written by by Jason Burt about the role of Ivan Tony. Clearly mentioned had the hump when he was introduced in what was the ninety third minute, I think it was, by Gas Southgate. Looked like he wasn't going to affect the game. Obviously, did have an impact in terms of that that second and ultimately decisive goal. Now he should be strike partner. Is there an argument for that? Can you see potentially Gareth Southgate playing two up top with Kane and Tony? Southgate is a is a man of, of caution. I would be surprised if there are many changes. I would imagine that Konza will come in for the suspended gay here and then it will sort of continue. And then Southgate will react late in the game against Switzerland and start throwing people on. Uh, England don't really have any identity at the moment. I mean, it's interesting what Martin was saying about uh, Jude Bellingham. Bellingham has been pretty much the saving grace. Gay's probably been the best player, but in a team which is so reliant on Kane's individual brilliance for two goals, and uh, Bellingham's individual brilliance for two goals. Bellingham's been absolutely vital. Coming to Ivan Tony, I mean, it's a very interesting piece and very cogently argued by, uh, by by Jason. The argument is is that Kane would then drop off as a number ten. The issue is that England have got so many number tens on the pitch. The best one is Jude Bellingham. Then you've got Phil Foden coming in from the left. Uh, Cole Palmer when he comes. Uh, 
comes in. He comes in off the right as well. He wants to play as a 10. But Tony, you know, when he came on, he made such a difference, not simply with his assist for uh, for Harry Kane's goal, but the way he occupied the uh, Slovakian centre-half to create that yard of space, which Bellingham used so brilliantly. Um, let's get back to the Guardian. Um, Martin, in terms of, you know, compare, it's so, always so tempting, isn't it, to compare this to previous tournaments. And there are, you know, some comparisons with Italian 90, comparisons even with, with Euro 96. And obviously Gareth Southgate had a, a very significant role in, in that tournament. Um, I wonder, do you, do you agree with the sort of sentiment uh, that, that he's expressing here? You know, we, we know we can get better. It's essentially like, you know, they've got through these four games with underwhelming performances, but it just takes that spark provided by Jude Bellingham and they can switch around this narrative completely. Yeah, I do buy that, actually. Um, and I think it happens a lot in, in major tournaments, particularly for England. I mean, even the first couple of games of, of the 1986 World Cup, I remember, were similar. Um, so there is this thing, you know, players getting used to each other playing, you know, every, you know, every few days uh, with opponents who are actually making it life very difficult for, oh. for them. So and I think that, is, that I do think that, there is, you know, you they can find this spark and it's just how you find that spark and whether something needs to change um, because it, it clearly hasn't clicked yet, but I, I actually do think it can. Um, in the sun, Henry, um, a whole new ball game, Kane digging ourselves out will, will make us believe. I mean, is it as simple as that? I think, you know, you, when you think about, you know, what happened in Italia 90, and the, the David Platt goal against Belgium in the second round, and you compare to Jude Bellingham here against Slovakia in the second round. Um, what, what about the kind of differences in the culture and the situation and the, the situation around the manager as well? Do, do you think that there are things that can be drawn from there? Are they two very distinct cases? They're very distinct cases in terms of uh, the, the commitment to Bobby Robson, the respect that he was held in um, amongst the players in Italian 90. Southgate was part of uh, the, the sort of the loyalty group of all the, the, the squad members of Euro, Euro 96 towards Terry Venables. The uh, the Bobby Robson team certainly had an identity with a, with a tone set by so Terry Butcher and, and players like that. Obviously, it changed tactically with Mark Wright coming in as a as a sweeper for the Dutch game, but the uh, but the English England uh, team going into Euro 96 had a very strong uh, identity. I don't really see an identity in this England team. I don't really see, I can't quite understand what their strategy is. I mean, the English press have been sort of, you know, fairly sort of supportive and, and balanced and critical where, where it's uh, applied of the English team. But if you look at the foreign press, they've been absolutely uh, castigating uh, Southgate and his tactics and saying, how come you've got so many good players? And they're just, you know, they're less than the sum of their very considerable parts. So I think at the moment we are in the lap of the players. And it's down to Bellingham and it's down to Kane and Tony when he comes on to actually drive England forward because the direction from the dugout really isn't coming there. I don't see the identity. I don't see the, the, the strategy. Can you tell me whether England are a possession team or a counter-attacking team? I'm still not sure. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're all trying to work it out, Henry. Um, just one, one final one on England for the moment to you, Martin. Just chatting with my producer in the build-up to the programme. Um, given the situation, given Gareth Southgate, we can only envisage two changes maximum. Obviously one in force because of Mark Gay being suspended. What do you think is going to happen on Saturday wow. against Switzerland? How many changes can you see? Um, I could actually think it would probably just be that one, actually. Um, I, I, I think he will stay with the, with the other ten that he started with. Um, and Even with Luke Shaw fit? <laughs> um, if Luke Shaw's fit, I think that might be... That might be uh, but, He'd have to be seriously fit to, to, to come in and start at him. OK, so just gay replaced by probably a three concert, you would imagine? At yes, I would, I would think so, yeah. yeah. I would think so. I mean, it, I mean he'll be looking, he'll, be, he'll look at people at France, they've been, you know, they've been really struggling up front as well. He'll think it's not just us. Um, you know, something can change. And, you know, he, I think he showed by not making any substitutions that he still has the faith in basically the core of that team. Yeah. OK, well, we'll find out, won't we, an hour before kickoff. All right, Henry, Martin, for the moment, thank you. Uh, we'll take a quick break, other side of which we'll look at more of the back pages, including this in The Telegraph. They look at the story that Martin just mentioned, France edging past Belgium, largely thanks to a stubborn defence and also 
Portugal through to the quarterfinals, but only just. You are watching Back Pages tonight. Welcome back to you at home. Welcome back to uh, Sports Writer Broadcaster Henry Winter and Martin Siegler, who's uh, Chief Sports Reporter for The Times. Um, let's uh, talk about other countries involved at uh, Euro 2024. And uh, Martin, well, England haven't been playing brilliantly. France haven't been playing brilliantly, but they have got through. They beat Belgium by a goal to nil. And it says here in the Telegraph, France is misfiring forwards Odette to superb defence. Yeah, kind of similar-ish scenario and um, what do you make of France right now again you know one of the pre-tournament favorites like England and, and not living up to the hype as it stands I, I, I think actually that they have actually that they, in flashes they look quite good but they just haven't, haven't had the, the finished product I mean Mbappe's had lots of the ball he's made some brilliant runs um, but that final pass has just been missing and they haven't had anyone to put the ball in the net even tonight uh, well, this evening was an own goal, wasn't it? That um, off of Vertonghen that that made the, the difference against Belgium. So, it's um, I, I think Didier Deschamps will be telling his strikers, you know, keep the faith. It, something will happen. Um, but it, they they do look brilliant in defence. So um, I wouldn't write them off at all. That's for sure. I mean, I think there's only Spain really are absolutely clicking and, and Germany. Mm. Um, the other countries that, who were in the running, you'd have thought before the tournament, you know, England, France, Portugal, it's been a struggle. Mm, yeah, they're taking their time. Um, speaking of Portugal, well, so we've got Bellingham into the <laughs> quarterfinals. We've got Mbappe through to the quarterfinals. We've got Cristiano Ronaldo through to the quarterfinals. But I'm sure you were watching with interest, Henry. Um, he, was, he was in tears in, in an early part of the game and managed to redeem himself in the shootout. He was in tears because Jan Oblak uh, read his penalty, dived to the left. This was in, what, about so 10 minutes ago of, of, uh, of normal time, and, and Ronaldo was in floods of tears. And then, you know, he, he did, you know, because this is Ronaldo, because he has absolute nerves of steel. He went and took his, uh, his penalty and scored past Oblak in the, in the shootout. But really, this is, I mean, Ronaldo will get the headlines because Ronaldo always does. But uh, this was down to Diogo Costa, the uh, Portuguese goalkeeper, I think saved three, the Slovenian effort. So, uh, but, I mean, what a, what, a, what a performance. I mean, I, I take slight issue with, with Martin. I don't know how much he's seen of uh, Switzerland. I know they weren't one of the sort of favourites going in, but I think they've been absolutely terrific. I would think in terms of actually sort of delivering, obviously Spain, Martin's right, you know, Spain have been fantastic. But, but Portugal made hard work of this because, you know, Slovenia worked, you know, really, really pushed them. And Oblak was, was brilliant. But Ronaldo, I mean, you know, I, I think I've written off Ronaldo probably for about the last six, seven seasons. Uh -huh. But he still, even he doesn't have that pace and that mobility, he's such an intelligent individual his movement this is the third reincarnation of ronaldo you know we, we've had the sort of swashbuckling winger we've had the sort of you know the the marauding center forward and now we've got this this individual who looks for the crosses who looks for the ball to feet who looks to turn and and take on the the keeper he doesn't really want the ball in behind he hasn't got the pace for that but he's still such an intelligent he's one of the top five players that the sport this great sport has ever seen so uh, you know write him off at your peril yeah, uh, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, we've got the, the dream top half in terms of the quarterfinals. Spain, Germany and Stuttgart next Friday, 5pm kickoff our time. And then Portugal, France in Hamburg next Friday, 8pm our time. Just don't do anything for your Friday evening apart from just watch those. It's going to be spectacular. And also, tournament of the goalkeepers, I think it's worth mentioning too. Georgi Mamadashvili, um, Diogo Kostras, you, you mentioned, Henry. You know, there are some keepers that are really standing out where maybe more attacking threats are starting to, to you know, to attain their time to really kind of land in this tournament. Um, I wonder if we switch our attention to um, domestic football. Dan Ashworth has finally been confirmed um, in his role with, with Manchester United. This is the back of the star. And on the left there, you can see Matthias De Ligt, Dan's first aim... In his, in his new role. I mean, what sort of side do you think we can expect Martin now at Old Trafford, now that this is now starting to really, all the jigsaw pieces now getting nailed down in place? I think he's a, a hugely important. I think that's been a, the, the biggest problem area uh, for Manchester United for you know, more than a decade. Um, so getting somebody who has done an amazing job at Brighton, very successful at, at Newcastle as well, 
I just think, you know, I'm not surprised, and I'm sure Henry isn't either, that he, he was the sort of seen as the key to getting Manchester United um, back up to where the, the owners and Ineos think they should be. Um, so I can only think that he's going to be, um, you know, already been at lots of targets uh, and he will have drawn up a, a list of, if they can't get their first choice and their, their second and their, or their third. So, yeah, he's got to be key. Yeah, clearly you can see the you know, centre-back is, is of absolute huge priority given the pursuit of Jared Branthwaite earlier and now and now this with Matthias De Ligt. Um, let's talk about Wimbledon because obviously the tournament got underway today and, and we're still waiting on Andy Murray. Um, and and uh, Henry, just briefly to you, I mean, you know, with, with his career having been so storied as it has been, especially at SW19, um, for him to, to take on the singles at this point is pushing his body really to beyond its limit. Um, would you like to see him having that last crack in the singles or do you think, no, let's have hopefully a little bit of a deeper run of the tournament playing alongside his brother Jamie in the doubles? Oh, it would be wonderful to see him in the singles, but only he can know, know and make that decision. It's his body, his career, but what a send-off he would be given. And again, you know, we, we've just been talking about Ronaldo. Murray is one of these people who, you know, defies the doctors, defies age. You, you look at the career he's had, you know, the two Wimbledon titles, US Open, 41 weeks as world number one. I mean, you know, and he's had carried it all with his sort of humour, humility. You know, he's obviously he comes over really well in interviews. So I hope he leaves on his own terms. And that's with a run in the singles. Yeah. OK, we'll find out. He's meant to be on the court third on centre tomorrow. And very, very briefly, Martin, to you, 30 seconds or so, Emma Rad Kanu facing a Mexican lucky loser rather than Alexandrova and doing what she needed to do. She said she dug deep like England. What did you make of it? Yeah, I think winning ugly is what she said. Like she, <laughs> she'd watch the match and uh, she realised that, uh, you know, she, whatever it takes, just get, you know, get that win. And uh, I think it was a, you know, a tough first set, went to a tie break and probably wasn't expecting that, but she, she, she dug in and she did well. Um, yeah. And that's what she needs to do. Yeah, plenty of Brits involved on day two as well. We'll look forward to seeing how they fare. Henry, Martin, thank you very much indeed for your company. Enjoyed it as always. We'll see you again soon. Um, if you missed any of the show, there is another chance to see Back Pages tonight, half past the hour. Show also available as a podcast. Just download Back Pages on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Join us again Tuesday night. Our guests will be Mark Ogden and John Cross, 10.30pm, Sky Sports News. <laughs> 